guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's been far too long since I've done a live and uh, just going to just check that the audio is working in here. Let me just jump over and check that it's working so you can hear me. Okay, great, great, great. All right, so welcome. Um, if you guys are new to the group, a uh, big, big welcome if you've been around for a little while and must apologize for not being so involved in this group. Um, there's been a lot of other stuff going on, but I'm going to make this priority over the next couple of months. So, um, strap yourself in. So anyway, I just wanted to, um, I'm jumping on to do some live training with the, uh, part of the 10 nonprofits that I'm going to be working with over the next couple, like a month or so. Um, we, are, if you didn't know, we have given away 10, uh, pre-built websites, which I'm actually kind of still working on at the moment. But we are teaching uh, 10 nonprofits and giving them 10 webs like WordPress websites that they can um, have as their own WordPress, like their nonprofit uh, uh, website. So what I'm doing is over the next um, over the next couple of weeks and well, over the next month or two, we are going to give away these 10 web, uh, WordPress websites, but we're also going to be then teaching everyone how to go in and edit them and go ahead and edit all the content, the text, the uh, all the different buttons, and we're also going to be teaching people how to maintain and just look after a website because my one of my biggest missions is to allow people to kind of break free of having to rely on web developers or um, someone in your nonprofit that you might have who helps you out with your websites. Um, you know, we're in a time now where it's so easy to go in and be able to maintain and update your own website. And it's so important that you can do that to be able to communicate with your donors, especially the way that, I mean, lately, you know, Facebook is punishing people more and more, um, well, not punishing, but not allowing your message to get out, even to people who are following you, that, you know, those people aren't going to see your messages. They might not see your shared blogs all the time. So what that means is it's more important to have a home base and to be able to start, you know, collecting people's emails and doing all that kind of stuff so you can communicate directly with them and not have someone in the middle, Facebook or Instagram, whoever that may be, um, you know, allow them the ones being the ones who tell you uh, that your message can be shown to your followers. So um, just a quick message to mainly to the, for the people in the group. Uh, if you weren't one of the 10 people that we chose to help uh, get their websites up and running, uh, not to worry. I'm going to be doing, like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot of live training in this group. Um, and then I'm going to be kind of transferring that over to our membership site where people get a little bit more, um, they can you know, actually be able to go in and download their website and uh, stuff like that. But I'm going to be doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of training. Um, and it's not, ju if you have a website already, great. This is still going to be extremely uh, valuable. And I think you'll be able to get a lot of benefit out by kind of following us over the next uh, couple of weeks and months. So today, um, like I mentioned, like I'm officially kicking it off. Haven't even emailed all my, um, all my, all the nonprofits back today, their login details. But if you're one of them, I'm going to be sending out an email where you can log in and be able to get into the membership site. But today's lesson, today's lesson's a little bit different because, um, the number one time consuming part of getting a new website up and running isn't learning how to build it, isn't going in and changing everything. It's the process of getting all the content down and the, well, being able to, you know, collect all that content. It's the most time consuming part of the whole process. You know, I've seen people take months to kind of gather everything up, um, especially with a bigger nonprofit uh, who has a board. If you guys have to get things approved and you just you want to make sure that everyone on the board has a bit of a say to the look and feel of the website and the content that you're putting out. Sometimes that, you know, with boards maybe only meeting once a month or once a quarter, it can be a time-consuming process to get all this done. So this is why I wanted to kick it off today. Um, just for those of you who aren't aware, I'm actually heading to Australia for three and a half weeks. 
um, which is why I wanted to kind of kick this off today. So in that time, you can really start diving in and starting to collect a lot of this content that's going to be needed. Now, I have um, put together a PDF for you guys, which is the same one which is over here. Here. <laughs> um, so go ahead and download that if you're in the if you're in the group of uh, not like if you're in the membership site, you can you'll find this a uh, download link there. If not, you'll also find it in the descriptions on this live. So um, I'm going to quickly go through some of this stuff today. Like I said, today's training is going to be quite different because what we're going to be doing today is starting to think about um, the content that you need to either redo, redo like like do from scratch, uh, photos that you may need to go and re-edit or uh, like to go retake and then edit and get them ready for the uh, website. Or if you even have like a video on the website, which is, you know, going to be extremely beneficial as well. Um, maybe start thinking about shooting the video. But today's, the purpose of today is to, re to really start diving in, um, give you guys the bit of a roadmap on what you do need to start gathering up content wise. And then, um, then we can start thinking about you know the look and feel and design of the website. But for the moment, the most important part is definitely starting to think about and get a list going of the content. If you have people on your team or on your board, you know, start delegating that to some of these people to help you out, so it's not so daunting and it's not such a huge uh, project. So, um, like I mentioned, you know, you guys can go through this PDF at any time, uh, but I'm going to browse through it with you, but I'm going to do it while we kind of look at some of the um, some of the websites that I'm going to be using as an example. Um, you know, in a lot of these websites, you'll notice they all have very similar things in common, and that is simplicity and being able to, like the whole idea of, especially with like we'll talk about home pages first. You know, home pages on a website have changed so much over the years. That you used to go to a website and it would just, there'd be so much going on on a home page. You'd have a sidebar with blogs and you'd maybe have stuff moving along the top and it would just, you, you'd, people would come to that home page and be so distracted by so many things going on that they barely take any action um, because they're just so overwhelmed with it all. And now when you think about these super busy home pages, if you think if you think about it that you know when you get on your mobile device and you start trying to look at stuff like that on a mobile device it's so distracting that people will end up they'll just be overwhelmed and they'll leave because it's just it's just they don't know what to do so you know with home pages these days it's really 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 important to have them really short you know have them short and you have to be able to you have to be able to Portray your message, your mission, within three to seven seconds at most. And that comes down to, you know, crafting that mission statement or a tagline. And you'll see some of these websites that I'll go through that they do a really good job at being able to do that. That as soon as you get to their page, you'll see that they, you know, exactly what they do. So let me um, let me share my screen with you guys. Let me try and get rid of this. Uh, okay. So again, uh, from kind of from now on, then we're just going to be doing a lot of uh, looking at the different websites. You know, this is uh, Pencils of Promise, and as you can see, like as soon as you get to their website, you know what they're about. You know, they've got this big bold statement here or t header um, explaining that. Explaining the, I guess the uh, the problem that 250 million kids can't read this, and then right underneath it, it's let's change that. So you kind of get the idea of what their mission is about. Now under here in that very next section, which is still above that fold, you know, right here, you know, we are pencil to promise. We are a global community that believes everyone deserves access to quality education. So you know exactly what they're on about. You know what their mission is about. And that's extremely important that you know you can portray that. Because if you go to some other websites and you make it you know more about the different programs and needs that you have immediately, you're gonna lose people. You need to be able to 
you know, explain the problem and then also help explain the impact. So very quickly, you can kind of see uh, the impact. You know, this our progress is the impact that they have. You know, that's that's what they've done. That's what they've been able to achieve. Um, so that's why it's so important to be able to get those two elements across to your audience ex- extremely quickly. Um, I'll go and have a look at some of these others. Some of these were examples of different things so i'll kind of go through some of these um again you know this website here um or they that why we exist you know then they talk about uh the issues and then they can talk about the impact that they're having so you know this is the scale of their impact which is a grand fantastic visually you can see the impact that they're having. Um, and again, you know, we can look at some of these other sites um, that we can go through, we'll go through eventually. But again, like, if you can kind of understand now why it's so important, especially for a home page, to have those two key elements. And we'll just, while we're on home pages, we'll go through and, you know, they have their impact, that, you know, what they're able to achieve. And again, you know, this is kind of a call for action. You know, they talk about the uh, the problem again, and then they talk about the solution that they have, um, and then they have a call to action, which is either to, to give, I think this goes to their donation page. So that's, yeah, very, very much, very easy call to action. Um, and then their solution, so some of these are the different projects they have, and we'll talk about that building out the different projects that you need. Um, and then that's kind of it. And then they've got, you know, a mailing list. So you, where you can join the mailing list. A couple of different call to actions as far as, um, what are these actually? Yeah, a couple of different call to actions. And then that's it for the homepage, you know. And again, you know, if we go to the breast cancer research, um, again, you know, they... Right here underneath the slider, under the, the slider here, which is highlighting different um, different campaigns that they have or their impact. Again, see, get involved. They're talking about the impact that they're having. Um, and then right underneath that is, again, it's a really, really simple mission statement um, explaining exactly what they do. Here they're highlighting a little bit about the... Um, the problems and the the issue. Yeah, so here, yeah, here they're highlighting about the problem and then, you know, how they've made an impact. Um, They've got their blogs here and then they have a little bit about get to know us. So a couple of different call to action. So, you know, talking about uh, the the research more in depth, talking about possibly having a fundraiser, um, finding an event. And again, that's it. You know, it doesn't have a whole lot on the home page. Just those really, um, those really important things of explaining the mission, explaining the like, explaining the problem, explaining the mission, and explaining the impact that they're having. And again, another great call to action is just having that call to action to get them onto a mailing list. So um, I'm not going to go too much into every single um, one. I want to kind of keep this kind of short this live, but again, um, we just need to start thinking about the content and how you need to go ahead and get that, start getting that created. Um, you know, I, I've listed in the back all these websites where you can go back to and kind of read over their stuff. Invisible Children is another great website that I, you know, I've really kind of modeled a few other websites off this. Uh, I think it's just fantastic. Very simple, very clean, very easy just to, again, you know, they could just get their message across. Their homepage is a little bit longer, um, but they have a lot of different things going on. You know, these are the different programs they have, um, how you can get involved. And um, this is kind of, you know, their, you know, their core value statement. And then some blogs. And that's kind of, you know, that's kind of it. So, um let me refer back to my sheet. So we're gonna we're gonna obviously 
think about the pages that you need to put on the on your website. You know, some of you may only need five or six pages. Some of you may need twelve or so pages, depending on how many different um, how many different programs that you have. So again, number one thing will definitely be the home page. You're definitely going to need. You're definitely going to need an um, a mission statement slash about page, which I think, you know, that's fairly self-explanatory. You can go through and read some of the suggestions and tips that we've put in there to help you build out that page. Um, again, you know, your mission statement needs to be extremely clear and concise, just directly to the point, you know, it, it can't be, it can't be paragraph after paragraph. It has to be extremely concise. Um, so, you know, Within this mission page, we can break it out, but you want to be able to have someone come to that mission page or come to the home page. And again, like within, I put down 10 seconds, but it needs to be much faster than that to get a really good idea of what you guys are about. Um, and then, you know, within the, your mission statement as well, emphasize on what makes you unique. What makes your nonprofit different to everyone else's? What impact are you having in the communities or worldwide that other people aren't able to provide? You know, so make it unique to what you're doing. You know, and that's why I put all these links in here to go through and look at some of these other pages um, and other websites to just get a good idea of what to put on your site and to kind of break out those pages. I really, really like this website as far as their menu structure goes. Um, you know, why we research is kind of the official kind of stuff that they have in here. Then our impact, which is, you know, they've listed four different ways that they're impacting. Get involved. They've been able to list all these different ways that you can get involved. And then the about section where they have, you know, our mission. You know, they have their mission. I, I, as I said, like this is long. But then, you know, that, that top heading, if you read that, you didn't have to read the rest of it because that explained everything already. Um, where were we getting about? Oh, about. Yeah. Um, decide whether you are going to put a meet our team or meet the, you know, the board of directors along here, you know, meet our team. So they have all the, uh, all the people on their team. If I was them, depending, I mean, they have a lot of people, I guess. But for some of the smaller nonprofits, I make sure you give a photo and a little bio to every single person that's involved with your organization. Um, and then, okay, so what we do, where was, I'm just trying to think, I, I know there was a really good example about what we do. Okay, so this is actually one of the websites I'm building a template kind of um, based off this website a little bit. Um, and again, you know, you get to their, get to their website and they just by reading that right there, you know what they're about and you know what they're doing. And then right underneath that, these are the five different ways that they're helping people and the different ways that they help. So this is what we need to start thinking about as far as writing. You know, if you're going to have four or five programs, we need to start writing a, a little blurb for each one, which needs to be about as short as these. And then for each uh, for each program that you have. We can write, you know, a little bit more, you know, you kind of expand a little bit more on it and people can read a little bit more in depth about it. But the most important thing really is, you know, that people can be able to come to your site and just kind of skim across it and uh, and find all that information. So, uh, so if you went learn more, and again, this is where... This is where you can start breaking it out a little bit more. Um, so, you know, you, you can have these, this is all the different programs they have. And then even, you know, you click even more like deeper in, um, to explain even more. So this is how you sponsor a child, where the money goes. If you had sponsorships, you know, we can put all the kids there. Um, so really, really important to kind of start thinking about all this and, uh, start getting all that content written up and then, um, we can, you know, we can, move on uh, further. Now, if you have an annual report as well, I just wanted to show you guys how uh, Charity Waters, okay, let's look at Charity Waters homepage first. Because again, you get here and then here is the problem. 
and then they're on and then what their mission is and hear how they help. So they've listed the problem, what they do to help, and the impact that they have had. So you know you can talk either right here. You can see the impact that they've had. Again, right here, we've funded twenty four thousand five hundred and thirty water projects. Bang! That's the impact. You know, and then they pop up a they pop up video. So these are the kind of things that you need to start thinking about. If you're going to need to go and start pulling up stats, if you don't have a lot of stats on the impact you're having, if you're new, find those stats on the actual problem then rather than the impact that you've had. But um, even if it's just small impacts to start with, you know, start putting that on the website, start writing that stuff out because that's what makes you different and unique is that kind of stuff. Um, Okay, another really important one for a nonprofit website is your annual report or transpa financial transparency. Uh, again, what was it? Pencils. Again, you know, 100%, every dollar goes to actual the program. So um, not all of your missions are going to be like that. Some of you have smaller nonprofit missions where you do rely on donations to kind of allow your mission to continue. Um, but we can break that down into where the money goes. Um, and so just start thinking about that and start writing all that out. You know, Don't think too much about visually how we're going to put that together. We'll, we'll tackle that when we come to it. But just start thinking about the ability to have all that information on hand when we need it. Um, so as I said, like Charity Waters... Water, sorry, is um, this is their annual report. You know, rather than just having an annual report where you download it and you skim over it, again, they've made it very visual and they've made it very impact driven. You know, how the impact that they've had through all this. So, you know, you can just kind of get the idea of their annual report. Um, and then I think their financials are down here somewhere. But as you can see, it doesn't have to be you know, just big old blocks of text these days, you know, we can kind of build out these different um, ways to to show your impact and your story. So that's kind of the annual report. Um, all right. Again, let's just talk about a couple of little things is the language that you're going to use over your website. Um, and just have a think about that. Are you going to be using language this which is like professional a little bit more fun or casual start thinking about that because that's going to help you obviously when you go and write everything you want to have a consistent voice but then when we start putting things together um, in like you know in your menu structure start thinking about you know are you going to use the words impact or are you going to use the words you know something else like so that's why it's important just to start thinking about that and that's why I kind of wear the brand identity comes in is is your brand like professional serious brand or are you a little bit more fun and playful um are you a little bit more casual so that's where you want to start thinking about that because we'll use that language across the entire website not just in like the bulk copy as i said like it'll be you know we can use that language inside the um the website so you know, again, this is very simple language, you know, our story, our work, our team get involved. You know, it's again, you know, their story is amazing. These guys who kind of started this mission many, many, many years ago and they started tiny and they've grown rapidly. So um, go to some of these websites and read their stories and just find out what they're putting in there. Because maybe not so much these guys, but the bigger, you know, the Red Cross and the... Um, Save the children. They invest a lot of money into when they build their websites. They have a lot of money and they hire specialists in every area to kind of help them develop their voice and story. And you can go there and you can learn a lot just by reading what they're putting in and then kind of mimic what they've got in their stuff um, just related to your story. Um, so again, you know, when, you, when you're on your story page, you know, talk about don't talk about just generic information. You want to really talk about you want to you want to talk about the cause and the problems, but with your story page, you want to be talking about the like don't talk about generic stuff. Talk about 
your mission, the impact that they've had, why you started, and what drove you to start it, how did you get started, why you got started, um, you know, all those additional things will really help people understand your brand and your mission as well. Um, and then again, in that story, you know, really talk about what makes you guys different because that's what sets you apart from all these different missions. Um, I know coming down from Haiti that the amount of missions down there is just, it's staggering how many missions are down there. And that's why it's so important that you can be able to um, go in there and be able to uh, separate yourself from the other missions. So something to think about when you're writing your story page. Again, um, get involved is another um, another category you're going to have to have a look at. So get involved here. So they have, you know, you can get involved by fundraising. Um, you, so they've got some fundraising ideas. And again, this is all stuff that you might want to start putting stuff together because I think it's extremely important when you do launch a new website that you don't just have that one option to donate financially. You know, do you have an ambassador program? Do you have fundraising tips and ideas and also um, content that you can give people to help you raise that money? Um, so, like I mentioned, this, where was it? In here, they have all these different ideas. Donate, fundraise, uh, find an event, just spread the word, become a partner, become an ambassador. And you need to be able to equip people how to do this as well, you know. And that's why I think, you know, while we're kind of creating all our the website and that, one of the other things you might want to look at is making a basically a media pack or information pack where people can go in and download a bunch of photos and text and copy or maybe a video or even if you have a brochure, let's put that online where people can go down there and uh, go in there and download all that stuff and start using that in within um, them going out and raising money for you and doing fundraisers. Uh, so the next one on my list was a donation page. I'm going, we're not going to get into that too much because, again, donation pages should be extremely simple. If someone's already gotten to the point where they're going to give you money and help you uh, help your mission, the donation page is going to be um, basically the only the only thing the donation page has to do is be able to take a donation. You know they've already gone through the process, they've decided that they want to give to you. So we keep this extremely simple. Um, again, this probably wasn't the greatest example because there's just some things in here that you don't need. Um, but we will break down. Um, the donation page a little bit more in depth as we kind of go in and get ready. So this is a donation page, super simple, super easy to, to kind of navigate through. So we'll dive into that donation page once we kind of um, finish up with all the uh, all this um, content gathering. So I'm, I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, like I said, Site Architect is going to be uh, a really big player. Uh, again, what that means is Site Architect is how I'll go back to this one because they've done a great ex job. So this is what I mean, like where we're going to put things. So our impact, you know, you put basically your um, the programs that you're working on, how people can get involved, and then basically about the mission. So and we'll again we'll talk about how to structure that as we get to that point. But um, at the moment, you just need to start thinking about the content and the pages that you're going to have on your website that um, and then we'll, we can talk about linking all that up so um, that's kind of almost it um, so I guess one of the big things I just again I just want to start talking about is the way to have that big impact with people again is just that con consistent telling of a story and telling of a story on each kind of page that you people go through and then giving them one call to action okay and that may be the call to action for if it's a blog post um, you know you might be talking about something that you want to raise fund for that particular mission or that particular um, campaign so the call to action would be to to, to donate um, whether that's financially but the different pages that you have 
um, you know, the, these not all of it is going to be a financial impact. It's going to be, you know, this one is obviously um, a donation, but say on your home page as well, you know, the call to actions that we need to have on here are things like getting on the mailing list. You know, that's so important. I've just, I've seen far too many people, unfortunately, rely on one or two social media platforms to do all their either marketing or fundraising or awareness. And when Facebook um, punishes you or they now say that if you want people to see your stuff, you have to pay us. You know, it's really, really going to hurt you. It's going to hurt how many people see your stuff and how often people will be seeing that kind of stuff. Um, and then, again, the consistent brand that I've kind of listed in the PDF is, I mean, at the moment, your first task is to just go out and get everything written and start gathering all this, um, the written stuff, and then the images. Um, again, I didn't touch on the images yet, but we will. But uh, this consistent brand and the consistent look is, again, you know, how do you, all your photos kind of look similar. Um, there was all the text, like, written by either the same person or with the same language. Um, super important. And then we'll, we can really tie that in when we start building out a page to have the, a very consistent look. You know, these people have done an amazing job just by using yellow to keep that consistent brand across their... Um, across their website so that's um that's kind of it there's a couple of little things on the bottom of this that we don't have to worry about too much now but again it's just being able to have this um you know consistency across the site and um is going to be kind of your number one project at the moment so uh with photos i didn't touch too much on photos uh again all these kind of websites have very very similar look involved in it you know and like i mentioned it's a very similar you know big wide photos along here photos along here wide photos you know faces that's that's what's going to really help drive your uh, drive your mes message um a lot of these you know like i just mentioned this, this is going to be kind of one of the websites that we're um, mimicking off so again, you know, we need to find, start gathering these big, wide images, great quality. Um, if we need to go through and like, I'll teach you guys how to go and blur out the background that you can do very easily if that's something that we need to do. Um, but again, you know, start gathering that content and start gathering the uh, the photos and images that we're going to need to to get your message across and uh, make an amazing looking website. Um this this again this is a really good website i didn't actually put this in the pdf but if i can i'll put this in the comments um so again they do a really really good job of highlighting the impact that they've had very very quick and easily you know right there seven million lives saved one billion cases prevented um Again, right here, this is the impact that they're having. So you can see that it's an organization which is having a huge impact. Um, so, you know, as you guys go through and start writing out your content, just pop into these websites and read their stuff and uh, kind of look into the, the language that they're using and look at, you know, basically, yeah, just look at look at some of the stuff that they're doing because, like I mentioned, you know they put a lot, a lot of time and effort, and they have a, a lot more um, resources than we do, so we can go through and just start mimicking some of this stuff. Um, I'd say mimicking or copying or you know in the marketing terms we call it you know kind of funnel hacking or hacking, but there's no point going out and constantly reinventing the wheel. You know if you go like I got most of these websites from top non-profit websites that you can go and Google. And because, they, I mean, they all have this same similar look and feel because this is the stuff that works, not just on an emotional level, but also on a, a level now where, you know, some of these web, some websites have these huge, big, elaborate, um, and then we're not seeing it as much anymore, 
But when you used to go to websites, you know, they used to have these big sliders and like five or six different sliders when you first come in with images sliding. And again, that's very, very distracting because that's five different things that you can, you know, you're asking people to take action on. And that's before they even dig into like the menu or even scrolling down. So again, you know, even just go to this website, just Google top nonprofit websites and uh, start looking through some of these websites and looking at the content and the photos and the imagery that they're using to be, get their message across. So anyway, I've gone on much, much longer than I thought. Uh, I hope this was kind of clear to you guys what, um, what that first step is. So again, you know, jump in and um, start gathering this content, start talking to your board members, start talking to people on your team and start um, kind of delegating some of this stuff if you need to. Uh, go ahead and get this done. Uh, again, start putting it in a spreadsheet, like get a, get a Word doc and start putting all this in a Word doc so you can kind of, um, so you can, you know, you can be able to track this all. Now, I'm going to quickly show you a some software, uh, Tilio. If you're not using this, I highly recommend this, especially as we dive into the... Um, especially as we dive into kind of gathering inspiration and content and photos and stuff that you like. They're basically like almost like a little vision board um, that you can just start ag like start adding stuff in. So you can add new boards. You know, these are all the things that I've put in. Um, so if you need to, say, create a new board... We'll just call it a test. Um, so you need to have a little card. So basically you're making these cards and then you can add to the cards. So you can add screen, like you can add, I'm just going to take a quick screenshot, but you can add uh, screenshots and con um, video files, just kind of come along and... Drop your files in there. If you find a bunch of websites that you like, you can put the URLs in there. Um, and then you can make comments on, oh, I really like this about this website. Or I thought the menu structure was really cool on this website. So again, you know, you can go in and just, you know, start snippeting bits of different websites. Or even if you just find one or two websites that you really, really like, uh, go in there and then start adding to those boards. It's just going to be really easy to kind of keep everything in one spot. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And um, if you have any questions, again, just use this group. Um, just for the, yeah, just use this group. Put your questions in and I'll try and get to them when I can. Thanks.